chapter number 3 verse number 18 to begin with. Second Peter chapter number 3 verse number 18. I want us all together, those of you on Zoom, in conference rooms, if in conference rooms, you are there, you have joined, wherever you are watching us from, in homes, hospitals, in cars, farms, you are in prisons, wherever you are, in offices, we acknowledge you and we welcome you to yet another wonderful holy sitting in the God's presence. Remember always that in the presence of the Lord, the Bible says that there is the fullness of joy. So something big will happen today in Jesus' name. Give me the scripture and I want you to be ready to hear something so that you can also learn and get deeper in the knowledge of the things of God. But grow in grace. Grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory. Both now and forever. Amen. But grow in grace. And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. In grace, we grow. The difference between you and your neighbor may not necessarily be because of the levels of education. The difference between you and your neighbor in success or in the manifestation of success is the grace of God upon you. It's the levels of God's grace upon your life. You will discover that you are putting the same effort that your brother is putting. Or maybe you are also putting more effort in what you do than what your brother is putting. But results are different. You are putting more effort, yet little results. Your friend, little effort, bigger results. The different sister is the amount of the grace that you have. It's not how much you have acquired knowledge in this world via academics, the so-called academic knowledge. I told you to say that knowledge is limited. The academic knowledge is limited. It's important, yes, but it is so limited. There is a certain place academic knowledge cannot break through you. You have to have a deeper knowledge. And that knowledge is graceful or is gracefully given. So brothers and sisters, in grace we grow. In grace we grow. In the grace of puppets, we grow. In the grace of prayer, we grow. In the grace of business, we grow. In the grace of family, we grow. Growth in grace, very important. You have to grow in grace. Grace has to increase. Apostle Paul said, you must share in my own grace. So there are men, brothers and sisters, that when you look at them, Yahweh has poured himself so much with them. Are you following what I'm trying to say? Yes. There are men that are identified with God and there are men that God is identified with them. There are men that are identified with God and there are men that God is identified with them. There are men that walk with God. There are men that God has chosen to walk with them. <laughs> and the grace is different. The grace is different. Are you hearing what I'm going to say? The grace cannot be the same. And that is the reason why we come under. That's where you come under. So submission is not because we just want to be called by a name of someone. You realize what you carry upon you. And you understand the levels of your influence in the spirit. And you project, you see deeper. And you are able to see that someone else carries a certain amount of grace 
that is not just given because of prayer. There is given because the finger of Yahweh picked that person out amongst ourselves, singled out, and gave him that amount of grace. That grace is worth submitting to. There is a certain grace that we are all growing in. Like as I'm speaking to you right now, grow in grace. You are going to grow in that grace because where you are right now is not where you used to be from the time we were just accepting Christ to be the Lord and Savior. Something has changed. There's grace upon you. Are we together? And I'm saying to the amen that God has chosen to identify himself with them. For example, it had to take the eternity to discuss and to sit down and to choose Mary. And they had to come down and negotiate with Mary. We want to make a deal with you, young lady. There's a contract we want you to carry. Sign in this contract. How shall it be? Because I know not a man. This contract, the response bit is full, totally taken by the Holy Ghost. And you shall be looked after by that. Now, Mary accepted the call. And she accepted. Brothers and sisters, eternity had to leave the realms and came into time to identify with Mary. If Mary said, I don't want, there's going to be another problem there. So, eternity chose. People like Abraham, God has to come down and say, come. Whether you like it or don't like it, I want you. And from you shall generations of the earth be blessed. Are you here to know what I'm saying? As Major One, our father was sharing with us yesterday, that Abraham did not even know what he was doing. He didn't even know what God's plan was. But God says, from you, I want to do this. And who can kiss such a person? Now, these are entities worth submitting to. So when you see us calling the God of Major One, we are not crazy. And we are not out of sense. We have not even lost any of our common sense. We are within the deeper layers of understanding. And if we want information in this life, if you have no one to look up to, you are going nowhere. In this life, if you have no one to fear, fear, you are going to nowhere. This is not demonic fear. This is reverence. The fear as respect and honor. Whether you are Christian or you are not, life demands you to sit under someone. No matter the levels of success that you can ever achieve. Life, the principles of life, demands you to sit under authority you cannot operate in authority if you're not under authority never you cannot exercise authority if you're not under one am i speaking to someone church yes. exactly so when you see us come here and says we honor god of major one we are going god of major one we exactly know what we're dealing with we're not doing this for fun. No. We're not doing this as a style. No. We're not doing this as a pattern. No. We exactly know what we're honoring and we exactly know what we're dealing with in the realms of glory. Yes. Can I hear a sinner's amen? amen? You cannot, you cannot operate under authority if you've, you've never sat under authority. If Jesus himself was identified as a son, God the Father, he said, Behold my son in whom I'm well pleased. Imagine God is calling himself son. God came out of God and sat there. For the Lord said to my Lord, the Jehovah Father, he came, he came out of himself and sat there. And he called himself son. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And the son also, yet he is himself. He calls him Abba Father. Abba Father. I am going to my father, your father. It tells you, 
I cannot operate on earth without authority. So family and friends, be it in business, you cannot succeed without sitting under mentorship. Be it in kingdom ministry is even worse and serious. You can't operate successfully in kingdom ministry without sitting under mentorship. You have to identify grace more than what you carry. And honor those people that you know for a fact they carry grace more than what you do. More than what you carry. Honor them. Honor men that carry grace. <laughs> honor those who honor is due. There are men you cannot run away from that they carry grace that is changing the whole world. Amen. Say amen. amen. Yesterday, I understood something as daddy was sharing the word. When he read, we read from the book of Genesis and he said, God said, via you Abraham shall the whole family of the earth be blessed. And curse be anyone that shall curse you. And major one said, how can you curse someone that generations, millions and millions of people shall be blessed by or blessed from or blessed through. And you want to curse that person. It can't work. I sat there and said, oh, that is the reason why my father is walking in victory. How can you curse this man? And believing it's going to work. It cannot work. It, it, it cannot just work. Because if major one is cursed, my, my dispensation, my generation is also cursed. I cannot allow that. And God cannot allow. Because all the families of the earth shall be blessed through you. How many people are being blessed today via this man? And someone else must come from the east. Or is coming from the west. And he wants to manipulate people. And he wants to curse this man. And to bring... You are joking. You, are, you don't know who we are. We are men that know where we are coming from. Our, our, the battle we... I, do you want to hear this? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. But when we begin to wrestle, you cannot hold us. We will never, ever allow anything and anyone to come close to the so-called major one. Never. Never, never, be it constitutions, be it nations, be it human beings, never, never, be it religion, never, we will not, we will not let it go, we will fight. You are very quiet. We cannot allow church. I don't know what you were hearing yesterday when the man of God was sharing the word. How many churches are there? Branches in South Africa? Many. Angola, Uganda, America, Malawi, Ghana. Name it. People are saved. Even you are there, you are saved. All these people, demons are living every single day. Marriages, people are being healed every single day. Pastors and a major on a busy preaching. Lives of people are being saved. And you want, you want to come from some to quench this fire? And you think ECG Church will be just watching. In the name of politics, you want to come and question me. You need to ask our history. Follow our history. We are a people that never give up and you fear nothing. Ask our fathers. We've, we are from the families of Shadek, Mishak, and Abednego. Whether you will kill the fire more than seven times, we will never surrender to Nebuchadnezzar. Whether you put us in a den of a lion, we are going to go there. You will see what lions will have. Am I talking to someone in this place? If there is a sea ahead of us, we go on Moses. The sea shall be divided. And we shall cross right on the dry ground. That is our inheritance. That is our inheritance. Ask who we are. Ask our history. These things I'm speaking to you, it's, an, it's in our DNA. Yes. I'm not speaking to you because I'm speaking to you. I'm a preacher. Yes. But what I'm speaking to you, these are things that they run through our DNA. Yes. In our DNA, there's an apostle Paul in there. Who says, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
That is in our, in our DNA. We fear nothing. For me to live is Christ to die is gain. For it's no longer I who is alive. It's Christ now who lives inside of me. For the life I live today is by faith in God who gave himself for me. The justice in me went out long time ago. Died long time ago. And you are dealing with such people. Entities. We are, we, you don't know what we, we are dangerous people. We are not ordinary. We will never allow the light to be dimmed. Never. Never. We, we know how to fight back. So let's say, that's who you are. Say, that's who I am. Say, that's who I am. Poverty is not in our blood. When you flow our genealogies from there, our patriarchs, the men of faith, no one amongst them is poor, including Father Abraham. No one lacks, no one. Even the days of the, of the church, the apostles, the bosses, among them was no one lacking. No one was ever lacking. And that runs through our blood. We will never lack and you will never lack in Jesus' name. I said you will never lack in Jesus' name. So Jesus' nation church, we are moving forward. No matter what we are going to face tomorrow. No matter what we are already facing. We are going to cross over to the other side. In the mighty name of Jesus. I said in the mighty name of Jesus. So if you are there, you are a man of God and a woman of God in this church, be strengthened. We know what we are doing and we know where we are going. Clap hands for Jesus and give him praise. I know exactly where I branched off for me to reach this far. Men of grace. Grow in grace. As you are growing in grace, identify men that carry grace not because they pray too much. They carry grace not because they are prayerful machines. They are prayer machines. No! They, because God decided in his sovereign power to bestow to, to, to give them such an amount of grace. When you identify such, you come under them. And you go upon their God and things work. What are you talking about? Say amen. amen. Genesis chapter number 12. Verse number 1. So wherever you are, ladies and gentlemen, as you call on the God of Major One, know that you are tapping into grace. You are not just calling a name. It's not just a name. You are calling, you are tapping into the realm of grace. The grace of your dad. This man of God has an exceptional grace. By now you should be able to know these things. If it was not of God, brothers and sisters, those of you, you are just joining in right now. You are watching on Prophet Channel, wherever you are watching us from. If Major One and ECG Church was not of God, by now, with all that has been experienced, this church wasn't going to be there. The work of a man cannot come to this far, church. The man, man's effort cannot come to this far. This is not money doing. This is not man's doing work. This is not education doing. This is not human knowledge. This is wisdom from above. This is mystery. This is the kingdom of God. This is the kingdom of God. One has to have the fear. When you are doing some certain things in this church, you have to have the fear. You are dealing with the kingdom of God. Give me the scripture. Let me show you the foundation of the church. The foundation of the church. Where church came from. Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country. From your family and from your father's house. To a land that I will show you. To a land that I will show you. There I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Get back to verse number one. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the first time you hear about Abraham. Or where you also first begin to hear is in chapter number 11, verse number 27. 
chapter 11 verse number 27. This is the genealogy of Terah. Terah is the father of Abraham. Now this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, Neho, and Haran. Haran begot Lot. Lot there, the Lot you know, was the son of Haran. And Neho and Abraham. Those are the three, three sons of Terah. Terah. And then from there, we come to chapter number 12. We begin to follow Abraham. And God calls out Abraham. You may not hear about Abraham from the rest of the chapters before chapter number 11. Where you begin to hear about Abraham is just chapter number 11 where the genealogy of Terah is being explained. And Terah explains that I have got Neho, Haran, and Abraham. And we go to chapter number 12. And all you hear is, and God calls out to Abraham and says, go to the land that I'll show you and leave your family. Brothers and sisters, let's only stick to verse number one. If I happen not to finish this one, by the grace of my father, Major one, I may come back in the second episode to complete on this one. This is where church started. The ecclesia started from there. You may not see the word church in the Old Testament. The word church is used commonly in the New Testament. But the meaning of the word church started from here. Genesis chapter number 1, chapter 12, verse number 1. This, brothers and sisters, is not just a scripture. It's not just a verse. Please, my family, take notice of this. That is the reason why the church is attached to Abraham. The church is attached to Abraham. It jumps on Moses. It jumps on Elijah. It jumps on Elisha. It jumps on Gideon. It jumps on Samson. All these great prophets, it jumps on them. It goes to the patriarch. The man Abraham. Because that's where church began. The interest of God to start church started from there. It was climaxed in the New Testament in the days of the apostles in Acts chapter 1 and in Acts chapter number 2. When God says, Abraham or Abraham, come out of your land and go to a place I will show you. This phrase or this statement means church. Get back to the scripture. Now, now, imagine we start from now. <laughs> I wish I had time to explain to you why do we say now? Where were we before? To say now. For another day. Now, the Lord had said to Abraham, get out of your country. From your family, from your, you know, from your father's house to a land I will show you. That statement, get out of your country to a land I will show you. Where there's a full stop from where it says get out. To what there's a full stop to a land I'll show you. That is the word church. So church simply means they called out. Those who are called out, the assembly of the called out. Those who are summoned. It's the word ecclesia. Those who are called, the selected few that are called. Out from somewhere to somewhere. For us to be here, we have been called from somewhere to be where we are right now. And that's how we are called church. So Abraham, when he was moving out from his father's house, physically, he left that place. But spiritually, that was the launching of the church on earth in time to come. So that was an exercise that will climax in the days of the apostles in the New Testament. So this was a rehearsal. He rehearsed, he practiced what church is going to be like. So church is when you are called out for you to be part of the church, you have to be called out. You have to be called into this assembly. 
No one joins this assembly without being called. It doesn't work. It does not work. You can never wake up today and say, I'm going to church. I'm a church man without being called out. It just doesn't work. Then everyone else would have been part of this church. Would have been part of the church. It has to be a calling. You are called out. So the process of being singled out is a process called, is a work, is a word, ecclesia. To a land I will show you. That land is Canaan. Which you, are, you already know is a spiritual land. Apart from being a physical land in Israel, but it's a spiritual environment where we are called into to live with God in the realms of the spirit. So apart from we have got the physical Canaan, where Abraham was being called into, that was a figure to explain the environment in the spirit where we are called into. So the moment you receive Jesus to be the Lord and personal Savior, you are moving from one region, one dwelling, one land to another land. One civilization to another civilization. Am I speaking to someone church? Exactly. So that's where the church began. That's why the church is connected to that man. Because he was called out and he left. So all the, the process of being called and he's leaving the house, he's leaving the mother and everyone, he's walking out. That is church. So church is a gathering of the cold out. Church is a gathering of the cold out. Church is the assembly of the cold out. It was climaxed in the New Testament in the days of the apostles. In Acts chapter number 1 and Acts chapter number 2 when the Holy Ghost now had fully come upon them and they were all soaked deep and baptized, baptized in the presence of the Holy Spirit and they were all filled. That assembly was now the church in the new testament it's called the church but it began when you're being called out so you cannot be part of the church except you're being called you are invited into this jesus he gave a parable of a banquet that there was a party the owner of the party said go and invite people to come you are to be invited into so all that he was trying to emphasize that there's a church you are always invited into you are called into this thing so brothers and sisters for you to be a church member for you to be a preacher for you to be an intercessor a member in judah a worshiper it's not your choice he called you into these things you are invited you received an invitation you you were honored by god you are called you are invited god honored you to invite you into himself you are, inv you are invited into this. That's why it's called church. That's why it's called the assembly of the saints. Or the assemblies of God. The assemblies of God. The gatherings of those who fear the Lord. That's what, it, that's what it means. So that word is coming from there. That's why church is called by the name Abraham. And that's where it all began. Learning. Are you learning? Yes. Are your eyes opening already? Yes. Have you captured it now? Yes. You now know the reason why Abraham is Abraham? Yes. That is the reason why family and friends, all the biggest and the strongest religions on earth, they are attached to Abraham. Because he's the only man that was called out to start something else. To start a gathering out of being called. So Judaism is part of it. They take Abraham as Major was explained yesterday as their father judaism the jews islamic the same they fear and they respect abraham as their father and so is christianity so almost each and every powerful religion on earth is attached to abraham because it is the man who was called out by that time there were so many other people the Nehon was there had a generation haran was there had a generation Many children they had a generation, but because it all followed Abraham, so why are Muslims attached to Abraham? Judaism is attached, Jews attached to Abraham, Christians are attached. It's because Abraham leave your father's house. That statement was deeper, very deep. It is not just living as you are just coming out of the house and you follow someone. No, guys, he was following. 
He says, to a land I will show you. Abraham began to go to a place he has never seen. He doesn't know where he's going. Where are you going? I'm going somewhere. There is a land I am going. And he believed that the land is there, yet he has never been there. That is faith. So you are called into faith, not to... Oh my God. It's a call into faith. So the moment you get born again, you are invited to start living a life of faith. A life that believes the future as though you are already there. You are called into faith. So Christianity is a faith-based system. It's a faith-based institution. We believe, we hear, we trust, we walk by faith and not by sight. So Abraham was following and walking not by sight. There was nothing sighting for him. He only walked by faith. That's why it's very special and a singled out entity. Because it is all by faith that we live. Can I hear a powerful amen? amen. So the moment you receive Jesus to be Lord and Savior, you are called into faith. You are called into a fellowshipping. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a very beautiful call and invitation that you can ever receive. That's where it all begins. That's where it all begins. From the day you accepted Christ, you begin to walk the walk of Abraham. It's called the Abrahamic walk. It's called the walk of faith. We believe in the future. We believe Christ is in us. We believe he is within us, amongst us, and exactly. And that's how we live. Learning? Now, if you be a believer and you have got no understanding of these things, it becomes somehow, you know, your strength is jeopardized. Your strength is jeopardized. God bless you for listening. I'm sure you've learned something else that is very important. So when you are talking about the gathering of the church, the singled out of the church, when you come, let's go to church, you are being invited to a work of faith. You are being called to a civilization of men that walk not by what they see. Men that walk not by what they, they follow. And they walk not by what they feel. It's not a feeling. We, don't, we are not here because of feelings. We are here because we believe and we have the faith in God. Can I hear a powerful amen? amen? Exactly, brothers and sisters. So this is how and this is where church came from. Clap hands for Jesus and give him praise. You can clap hands far much better than that. <laughs> Jesus Nation, are you there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Overflow, are you learning something? <laughs> very important, very, very important. So anytime you hear Abraham, 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 just know he's a very, very important man. Because we are all in him. All churches on earth are in him. Including you are in him. All the assemblies are in him. ECG church is in him. Every church you ever know, all are in him. Because he was called out. He was called out. Say a beautiful amen. amen. Let me get you deeper just for five minutes and uh, tell you something that perhaps you may not have seen it in the Bible. But it is very, very important. Are you learning something already? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, something happened when Abraham was being born. For the Bible to say, now, now God calls out Abraham. Now God calls out Abraham. It's because something happened. Remember, our daddy yesterday had already, he just hinted a little bit there. But he said, Abraham... His father was worshipping idols. He was not only worshipping idols, he was actually selling idols. He was actually making idols and selling them. Men were buying idols from him. At some point as he was selling, Abraham, 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 before chapter number 12, God calls him out. His father, Terah, told him to go in a shop and begin to sell. 
there was an old man a woman that entered in the shop to buy a god a god a god found abraham there abraham began to interrogate what are you looking for he says i want to buy a god there i want to buy a god god he says for what do you know this thing does not move that woman reported abraham to his father You are not a good seller. You are destroying my business. <laughs> are you catching it? And so this is what happened. When the father left the, 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 the shop, there was one big God. I, I, a God statue in there selling. Abraham locked the door of the shop and said, he put, you know, a signpost at the outside and says no selling today so no one was coming to buy he entered in the inside listen to me the woman who came to buy he brought in pot a big pot with a cooking stick so he said i offer this to the gods that they must be cooking and eating from this pot so abram took that pot inside of the of the of the shop and took the sticks and began to destroy all the gods of his father. He destroyed all the gods of his father. And at, at the end, he took a cooking stick, that stick, and put in the hand of that big god. And he left. When his father entered the shop and came back from wherever he was, he found every small gods or little gods are destroyed. All the idols, all the idols are shut up, broken, broken. And he was asking, Abraham, who has done this? Abraham says there was war in this shop. <laughs> the gods were fighting. They rose and began to fight against each other. So the big idol fought all the small ones because he wanted to be alone here. Then his father said, Abraham, you must be very stupid. These gods don't speak and they cannot fight. They don't move. They can't fight each other. They can't move from there to here to begin to fight. Even this big one here cannot speak, cannot talk, cannot beat. Then he says, Dad, if you know that they cannot move, they can't beat, they can't destroy, why are you worshipping them? Why are you worshipping them? Why are you worshipping them? Ladies and gentlemen, we serve our God. Who, who does not sleep, does not slumber. He is omnipresent. He was, he is, and he shall forever be. That is the time the father of Abraham was convinced. What, my son, what are you talking about? And the son began to dialogue to his father and he ministered faith to his own dad. That is the time Father Abraham, father of Abraham Terah, moved out from the church of Nimrod where he was worshipping as, as an idol worshipper and a merchandise in that store. He left. Stand up on your feet. Glory! Who come for part two? Yes. Jesus Nation Church, are you there? Yes. Others they believe in chariots. They believe in the God that cannot move. We have the God that moves. We have the God that speaks and touches. The Bible says, my eyes are not blind that I cannot see. My hand is not too short that I cannot touch. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say, church? Yes. Our God is omnipresent and is everywhere. Yes. This is the only time when Father Terah, the Father Terah, the Father of Abraham, surrendered to the authority of the eternal God. To say, I think this, there is a sense you have communicated to me because Abraham would have not spoken the word to the Father to convince him because he was so deep-rooted in the idol worshipping. And it has been their civilization for a very long time. 
no one had ever come to challenge the wisdom of terror in as far as idol worshipping is concerned. And by that time, they were also worshipping Nimrod because he was the one who was building the Tower of Babel. And brothers and sisters, all that happened, it is from that time terror began to believe in Abraham. So what has happened to you? So Abraham hid a secret to terror and says, I will, I will tell you the next time when, I, when, when we meet. But now, terror picked Abraham and, be, and they left that place where they were. They left that place where they were to another place. Are you hearing what I'm to say? Exactly. At that particular time, Abraham was almost 53 to 57 years of age. Are you catching what I'm saying, church? Exactly. So he left from there. He went to another place. We want to make a prayer. We want to make a prayer. Anyone worshipping idols. Anyone not trusting in the God we save. Let God of major one manifest his power. And my prayer also is as you're watching me, wherever you're watching me from, you may have had a situation that has challenged you for a very, very long time. Believe you me, our God never fails. And he has never disappointed. And he does not disappoint. He was and he is and he shall forever be. I want you to always trust. There is always a way God will always intervene. So this is where the church started. Be proud that you are born again. Be proud that you are a child of God. Be proud that you are called into, you are singled out by Yahweh into this kingdom civilization. You would have not been where you are today if you are not separated. So you are called that. You can never go back. You have no strength to go back there. You are into the ecclesia. You are representing the government of heaven. In, are you hearing what I'm saying, brothers and sisters? Exactly. That's who we are. There is no way Satan can win. When we hold the hands and we pray for something, it happens. We are a powerful and dangerous man here on earth. We are representing all the heavens. We are the ambassadors for Christ here on the earth. Can I hear a good and a serious amen? amen? Clap your hands and worship him and praise him for who he is, what he has done in the name of Jesus. Thank you for our salvation. Thank you, Jesus, that you called us out of the darkness to live in a marvelous and precious light. Thank you, oh God. We were blind, now we can see. We were deaf, now we can hear. We worship your holy name. Thank you that we are the ecclesia. The whole ecclesia. We are the representatives of the eternal government. The government of Jesus. We worship your father. Thank you, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Thank you for our deliverance. Thank you that you sing God us out. We worship your holy name. Bless him, appreciate him. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. He is a good God. He is a powerful God. He is a merciful God. Give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. You are in the kingdom of God. You are a child of God. You are born of the spirit. You are born of God. You are born of the word of God. You belong to the kingdom of God. You are in Zion. You are a child of the Lord. In Jesus, powerful, mighty name, we pray and believe. Amen. Glory to God. Very important. Knowledge is power. You, know, you need to know where you're coming from. So when someone tells you, you can explain not only from the day you got born again, but you can explain where your calling came from. Are you hearing what I'm trying to say? So this is exactly what came from, and this way, where I came from, and that's what happened for me to be there. Then you can operate in authority. Because information, right information, exact information, is equal to the authority that you have. What you know controls your destiny. Say powerful amen.
Stretch forth your hand towards the altar as I bless you. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that we are under a great grace. We are loved and so much favored that amongst us you singled out a man and you decided in the power of Trinity to identify yourself with him. You singled out major one and you gave him yourself. Thank you so very much that under the grace you have given him, thousands and millions of people in the world are saved. And you have the grace to even hear the discourses of eternity. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We because we lift our spiritual parents in your hands once again. All of us together. Now that we know that we are under a great grace, may your hand continuously and perpetually be upon them in success and in all their undertakings in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for the revelation of the church. We now know where church came from. Thank you, the Lord, through Abraham, Abraham, you managed to bring out an entity that is not a physical institution, a spiritual institution based on faith. We appreciate you that you are the workers of faith. Now, blessed be your name. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us into this faith realm. When we appreciate you. Now that we are the partakers of this divine nature, I stand in this authority and I therefore pray to everyone and for everyone under the sound of my voice, your faith in God shall be stronger and stronger. No one will remove and shift you from your civilization in God. Your eyes will be kept open to see and to behold the beauty of his presence. It is in Jesus' name that I call you blessed. Amen. Praise God. Put on together and pray. Appreciate God. Amazing, amazing, amazing. That was part one. We'll be coming with part two. Until we capture. The next time I'll be coming by the grace of God of major one. We'll start when it says Genesis chapter 12. This one says, now God says. We'll stop there. Now God says. What does that mean now? We'll start from there. God bless you. And let's worship the Lord.